The widespread excitement and optimism generated by the creation of the ECW brand in the spring of 2006 had long cooled by the Christmas season, and the succulent flavour of nostalgia had grown staler than that hardened wad of chewing gum under your old science class desk. Six months of diminishing returns and decreasing expectations came to a head at this little pay-per-view known as December to Dismember. If you've never seen it, ECW December to Dismember was just plain bad, making the 2018 backlash look like WrestleMania 19. For longtime fans of the ECW name that still clung to the hope that the brand would meet their expectations, watching this two and a quarter hour fiasco was the equivalent to watching your cat get shot with paintballs for the same length of time. ECW was so dead after December to Dismember that the following night's Raw may as well have been a two hour memorial show dedicated to its memory. Counting a dark match, 24 individuals took part in in-ring action on that fateful night in Augusta, Georgia. Let's take a glance at where that double dozen ended up after enduring this all-time clunker. Mason Ryan, Stevie Ray, Earthquake, Alundra, Blaze, Norman Smiley, Zach Gowan, Bam Bam Bigelow. Ahmed Johnson, Tory Wilson, Buff, Bagwell, Robert Gibson, Dave Taylor, Terry Taylor, and Godfather's Holmes. Wayne Gill, Adam Bomb, Michael Hayes, Cor, Von, S.A. Rios, Jim Manai, the manager from Kai and Ty, Jim Powers, Francine, Jack Swagger, Mean Gene, Fatchick Thriller, Duke the Dumpster, Oklahoma Manta! What happened to that wrestler? Someone main eventing, which leaves me lamenting. What happened to that wrestler? Some since long forgotten, but their memories live on. Rene Dupree. The bloom was explicitly off the rose by this time for the practitioner of the French tickler, yet Dupree was only 22 years old at the time of this event. The one-time teenage phenom debuted on the brand late in the summer, sporting a new look, but was gone from the company within a year. Still active in his mid-30s, Dupree primarily wrestles in Eastern Canada, but toured Europe for various promotions this past spring. Stevie Richards One of only two ECW originals to score a victory on the night, Richards defeated Dupree before the show went live. Always a capable performer and up for anything team player, Richards sadly continued to fly low under the WWE radar up until his exit from the company in the summer of 2008. Still wrestling occasionally in his late 40s, Richards, a longtime proponent of rehabilitative exercises, owns and operates Stevie Richards Fitness, which specializes in 12 and 16 week programs rooted in simplicity. Johnny Nitro In order to beef up a brand low on established talent, WWE placed two established ringer tag teams on the show to ensure at least one quality match. Nitro was the least experienced of the quartet that opened the show with a 20-minute battle, with few possibly guessing that in half a year he'd be the champion of the brand under the name John Morrison. Still a gifted athlete despite pushing 40, John Hennigan recently left Impact Wrestling after a successful two-year run. Joey Mercury The other half of MNM actually was an ECW original, working for the company in its dying days with partner Christian York several years before finding WWE success alongside Nitro. This was certainly the happier of the two pay-per-view outings for Mercury that month, as two weeks later at Armageddon, he nearly had his face grated off by a ladder spot gone awry. Inactive as a wrestler for close to a year, Mercury now works behind the scenes for Ring of Honor as a producer and trainer. Matt Hardy Certainly one of the biggest stars on the show in terms of general name value, this post-Mattitude, pre-broken version of Matt was keen to rekindle some of the old Hardy's magic for a time. And for sure, the opening pay-per-view bout truly was more than a diamond in the rough, it was a diamond found at the local landfill. Still with WWE in his mid-40s, Matt is currently off television, working random house show bouts with the likes of Andrade, Shinsuke Nakamura, and AJ Styles. Jeff Hardy Brother Nero had the most prestigious belt on the card, reigning as Intercontinental Champion since beating Nitro for it three weeks earlier in Manchester, England. The feud between the Hardys and Eminem kicked on through the Royal Rumble, with the skillful tandems enhancing more than a few events with their battles. Jeff is also currently with WWE, although as of this video, he has been sidelined with a knee injury and isn't expected back until autumn 2019 at the earliest. 
Matt Stryker The former school teacher made an interesting sartorial choice that evening when he decided to wear trunks with his mug emblazoned across the backside, prompting Joey Styles to make a face-sitting joke that just about murdered Taz. Stryker's time as a wrestler in WWE slowed the following year before transitioning more into managing and commentating. While Stryker does still wrestle with some regularity, he's mostly a broadcaster these days, most notably for AAA's Triple Mania events and hosts the Fantasy Baseball Hour radio show. Balls Mahoney Though his theme music at the time was just a pale imitation of a more familiar ACDC standard, Mahoney still brought some genuine ECW flavor to the table, even in toned-down form. Mahoney was the only ECW original to score a victory on the main card, which contributed somewhat to most fans' and critics' annoyance with the event. Tragically, Jonathan Reckner passed away from a heart attack in 2016, the day after his 44th birthday. Little Guido The Sicilian shooter was still a very capable performer in 2006, but by this point never really got to show off much of his stuff outside of squash beatdowns like this match here. Just a year earlier, he reigned twice as Cruiserweight Champion, but his ceiling significantly lowered after those runs before he left the company in 2008. Still wrestling with some regularity in the northeastern US, Guido remains a regular for a number of promotions, most notably House of Hardcore. Tony Mamaluk if you think today's crop of wrestler takes ballsy risks with their brain and spinal column, you never saw thin-bodied Mameluke play Demolition Derby with the guardrail, giving as good as he took from the metal barricades. Despite being a criminally underrated technician and high flyer, Mameluke never got a chance in WWE and left the month following this event. After a near 20-year career, Mameluke retired from the ring in February 2018 following one last tag team match alongside Guido in Amsterdam, New York. Sylvester Turkai WWE kinda missed the boat on Turkai, a frightening wrestling machine that looked like a cross between Cassius Ono and Punch Out Super Macho Man. This 300 plus pound mad bear hybrid once wrestled Kurt Angle at an amateur level, as well as experience in Japan, but fat lot of good that did him under WWE's umbrella, leaving the company in early 2007. Retired from the ring since 2012, Turkai now lives in the Pittsburgh area where he's employed at a car dealership. Elijah Burke Though an amateur boxer with an impressive record, in his partnership with Turkey, Burke was the mouth to Turkey's might, and the two highly skilled fighters brought some promising MMA influence to the ECW brand. When Turkey left, Burke seemed to have potential as a breakout star, but fell into the mid-card and was gone by the end of 2008. After a run through TNA as the Pope, Burke still wrestles in the Florida area, and even appeared with friend Xavier Woods on Up Up Down Down in 2019. Tommy Dreamer the heart and soul of ECW poured his guts into many extreme events through the years, but even his sheer presence wasn't enough to lift this event out of the doldrums. The fact that Dreamer did the job that night to a wrestler that didn't seem to win many matches didn't mollify the crowd much either. Dreamer still flies his ECW flag high in his wrestling endeavors, keeping its spirit alive through his own promotion, House of Hardcore, while also wrestling and agenting for Impact Wrestling. Davari with all due respect to Davari, a wildly underappreciated talent that teemed with unfettered energy, he just spent the previous two years as mostly a manager and knock-around guy, so beating Dreamer here just didn't feel right. But hey, a talented wrestler that was long overlooked got a win on pay-per-view over a trusty veteran, so at least there's an upside to it. The older brother of Arya Davari returned to WWE in early 2019, working backstage as a producer. Mike Knox Knox was a week removed from a career lowlight, getting super kicked into a quick elimination by Shawn Michaels at Survivor Series, followed by Michaels asking his teammates who the hell Knox even was. After December to Dismember, he continued a slow slide deep into the midcard, though he did actually compete for the world title in an Elimination Chamber match at the 2009 No Way Out. Inactive since the spring of 2018, Knox works as a realtor in Palm Harbor, Florida. Kelly Kelly at the time, Kelly's character had a thing for CM Punk, despite being the girlfriend of Knox for no adequately explained reason. So during this mixed tag team match, Knox took young Kelly and laid her out, back at a time when, truthfully, that wasn't too shocking of an occurrence in mainstream pro wrestling. Largely retired from the ring after 2012, Kelly still appears at various wrestling-related conventions, and even held the WWE 24-7 title for a brief spell during Raw Reunion. Kevin Thorne we know Gangrel. We've been soaked in questionable crimson by Gangrel, and you, sir, are no Gangrel. 
The former Mordecai received second life in WWE as a neck-nibbling dweller of the night, and though you think he'd be at home on the macabre-oriented sci-fi channel, this run through WWE's main roster didn't produce stellar results for him. Thorne still wrestles under the name on occasion today in the Indiana area, where he also works, like opponent Knox, as a realtor. Ariel. Unfortunately, and it may be crass to say, but Ariel, revealing attire and all, jumping up and down on the ropes while waiting for a tag, woke the crowd up after a rather dull stretch of action. Her suggestive pinfall on Kelly capped off an admittedly uneven match, but the audience in Augusta was happy, so there's that. Retired from the business since 2012, the woman better known as Shelly Martinez sells Avon products through her social feeds while also modeling. CM Punk from the time that Punk arrived on the ECW scene at the Hammerstein Ballroom, it was clear who the crowd favourite on the brand was, a worthy successor to the tribe of Extreme that preceded him. So, of course, Punk's the first one to be eliminated from the Extreme Elimination Chamber, because reasons. After succeeding in WWE anyway, Punk infamously retired in 2014 and now commentates for the Cage Fury Fighting Championships while also embarking on an acting career with two horror films now to his credit. Hardcore Holly. Sabu was advertised for the six-way main event for the ECW title, so you can understand what a kick in the plums it was for WWE lifer Holly to replace him following an injury angle the night of. Holly's resurgence on ECW, see his bloody war with Van Damme, was a pleasant surprise, but it didn't do much for this show. Still taking the occasional booking at age 56, Holly lives an active, outdoors-oriented lifestyle in Dubuque, Iowa. Rob Van Dam. After four uninteresting matches that didn't exactly capture the accepted essence of Prime ECW, a Van Damme victory in the main event could have ended the show on a desirable note. Then he got bloodied up and pinned halfway through the chamber match, so between Slim and Nunn, Slim was already on a jet plane out of Augusta. At 48, Van Damme still takes to the skies, having returned to Impact Wrestling in the spring of 2019. Test. Talk about running the gamut of crowd reactions. Tess hitting the diving elbow off the chamber pod onto a chair on Van Damme's face was worthy of a divine feces chant. Then he pinned Van Damme, which ended all hopes of the crowd getting the coveted fairy tale ending and compromising the rest of the match's story. Sadly, Andrew Martin passed away in March 2009 of an overdose of oxycodone, days shy of his 34th birthday. The Big Show. You know the evening's going swimmingly when, during Paul Heyman's pre-match promo in which he exalts champion Big Show, a fan can audibly be heard screaming, THAT'S WHY HE'S LEAVING NEXT MONTH! Which was true. Show introduced the barbed wire bat into the chamber, which went virtually unused, taking some of the extreme out of the extreme elimination chamber. Though inactive for some time, 47-year-old Paul White recently gained medical clearance for an in-ring return following two hip surgeries. Bobby Lashley. The chosen face of the ECW brand had all the physical tools necessary to be a top guy, but was hamstrung by some badly written promos and a way too sudden push to the top that fans weren't buying. Though he stood tall in the end holding the ECW title, that image was merely punctuation on a sentence very few people wanted to read in 2006. Lashley is currently in his second WWE run, winning a pair of IC titles, but is presently sidelined following elbow surgery. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.